I'd like to discuss some surprising or shocking reasons for having high blood glucose despite normal levels. So in other words, some people have high blood sugars and it's not actually dangerous, okay? So I wanna really cover this topic because this is very, very important. And this video is based on another video that Dr. Ken Berry did uh, on blood glucose. And Dr. Ken Berry is one of the you know, top influencers in the area of keto slash carnivore diets. But he made a big point about this one thing, having blood glucose levels being pathogenic versus just physiological. So if your blood sugars are high, yet it's derived from more of a pathogenic reason, eating refined sugars and carbs, that's one thing. But if the high blood glucose is coming from another reason, it could just be part of the normal physiology that occurs, and it won't create the damage that the pathological high blood glucose levels will create. In other words, when you check your A1C, which is like the average blood glucose levels for three months, it's not gonna be elevated. But when these blood glucose levels are derived from the wrong diet, it will elevate your A1C. And very simply, when you have high levels of A1C, you're getting uh, what's called glycation. And glycation is the damage from what the sugar does to your proteins. It's gonna make those proteins unusable, and that's gonna create a lot of problems in your eyes, in your brain, in your kidneys, in your nervous system, as well as in all of your arteries. So if you find your blood sugar levels going higher, uh, definitely watch this video because it's gonna explain a lot. Now, when we're talking about blood glucose levels, okay, apparently normal is less than 100 milligrams per deciliter. Now, to me, that's not optimal. It might be normal, but it's going right into this pre-diabetic situation, which is above 100 milligrams per deciliter. Personally, I think uh, if you have a blood glucose level of between 60 and 80, that's much better. But when you go on keto, lowering your carbs, it's going to come down because you're not living on sugar. So even though you might have even lower blood glucose, right, what is considered hypoglycemia, you don't feel bad. That's your new normal because you're not living on so much sugar. Let's dive right into it. If you have an infection, okay, that can increase your blood glucose glucose level. If you had an injury, any injury, if you have inflammation, if you have stress, and I'm talking about mental stress, all can increase your blood glucose level. Now, infection, injury, inflammation, and mental stress all increase cortisol. And another name for cortisol is glucocorticoid, gluco meaning glucose. So in other words, that stress hormone cortisol uh, has this interesting effect on your blood sugars. It'll actually release blood sugars, thus the raise in blood glucose. Now, it just so happens that this increase in cortisol level, if you look at the circadian wave of cortisol, spikes or peaks at 8 o'clock a.m. in the morning. And uh, this is called a dawn phenomenon, and it could be just normal. I mean, it's normal in animals, it's in humans, because you have this cortisol increase. And on top of that, if you have insulin resistance, okay, which most people have, you may have an exaggerated spike of blood glucose. And the reason is because you, you have this um, lack of insulin and because there's resistance to it. And because insulin regulates blood glucose and it can't as much, you're going to have elevation of this blood glucose from that. So the cells now can't respond to this insulin effect because there's blockage. And so the blood glucose is going to go up because it can't push it down. Normally, when someone goes on keto, it takes a period of time before they really correct that insulin resistance. And so they may notice this dawn phenomenon, this high blood glucose in the morning, um, over a period of weeks or even months. But that is not pathogenic, okay? It's not going to result in a high A1C. I'll give you some solutions of what to do if you're concerned, but I just want to let you know it's nothing usually to worry about. Another thing that can increase your blood glucose level that's not necessarily pathogenic is a lack of sleep. Uh, if you're not sleeping, the blood glucose level will go up because of this spike in cortisol again. It's just more stress. This is why people might eat more or uh, crave certain things when they haven't slept that well. Artificial sweeteners also have the ability to uh, elevate blood glucose levels. Too much caffeine in certain individuals can elevate blood glucose levels. 
Jet lag can also create a bit of a stress in your body and elevate blood glucose levels. And also intense exercise, okay, can elevate blood glucose levels. So in other words, you wanna take in consideration all these other factors when you check your blood glucose because when you exercise intensely, you're basically just, you have to use glucose. So your body's gonna start uh, releasing a lot of the stored glucose from your glycogen in your muscles, in your liver, and that can show up on your test. Even the stress from a menstrual cycle can increase this blood glucose level. And of course, let's not forget medications, right? Prednisone is a big one that can increase uh, your blood sugars. Um, beta blockers can do it. Statin drugs, antipsychotic medication can also increase this blood glucose level. Even if you go on um, longer fasts, let's say you fast for 48 hours or longer, your red blood cells actually need glucose to run on. Uh, they don't run on ketones. And so it has to be generated from your liver um, called gluconeogenesis. So this sugar that's made from non-carbohydrate sources because the person didn't eat sugar, I mean, they're fasting, can then cause the liver to make a little bit more sugar, uh, causing this false appearance that you know you have high blood glucose or it's a problem. Now, another very interesting reason for high blood sugar is low sodium in the diet, not enough salt. Now that can also occur from something called hyponatremia, where you're drinking lots and lots of water, diluting this electrolyte sodium, but this added stress and the decrease of sodium can start influencing other hormones, like one called ADH, which then can increase blood glucose levels. And then just the stress of it alone can increase cortisol. And so a lowered amount of sodium can indirectly increase your glucose. Low sodium can also come from diarrhea, vomiting, or just excessive sweating. You know, we're so hyper-concerned about too much sodium, but what about a sodium deficiency? You couldn't live very long if you completely restricted all the sodium from your body. So a lot of these points I mentioned are not going to create a pathogenic um, effect because your blood glucose level is higher. A few other things you need to know about of having like a, a false positive for high blood glucose. Um, if your strips that you're measuring your blood glucose levels are out of date, they expired, that could be a problem. If your fingers are wet, or maybe you ate some sugar or you have some sugar on your hands, whatever, that can interfere with this test. Or even having some dirt on your fingers. You want to clean your fingers before you do this test. Extreme temperatures can also falsely alter this test, as well as what you ate just before you tested. You should always test yourself in a fasting level, uh, not right after you drank alcohol or right after you ate something. And one last point about this topic, the most important thing you need to know about having high blood glucose is getting on the right eating plan to really correct it. 